Are we in an AI bubble? Does the AI bubble remind us of the dot-com bubble? We're going to have this conversation with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. This is an interesting topic because I think this is floating around. I don't think there's a perfect answer for it, but I think there are some uh, corollaries that can be drawn, similarities between now and the 1990s when the dot-com numbers were so uh, you know hysterical. And, and, and I think that we'll, uh, we'll do a good job fleshing this out. Well, let, remind me of this. I believe you were in college uh, when the dot-com kind of blow up happened in the early 2000s. Is that right? Or were you were in high school? No, I was in, I'm 88. I was born in 88. I was in oh, middle school at this point. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't know what the stock market was, but I can promise you I've done a lot of studying on it now. Yeah. And I, the reason I bring that up is because I was I was in the throes of the dot-com crisis. Or Actually, I, I ran it up. I wrote that thing from seven grand to 200 only to turn around and see it all disappear to 40. So I, I, I remember, I remember the feeling of Google going public. I remember the feeling of Facebook going public. I remember, I remember pets.com. I remember web van. I remember excite. I remember all of these things going to zero. Um, and you so were yeah, on this- Cisco if I recall, if I recall correctly, correct? Correct. Yeah. Cisco Systems was the stock that I was running and playing with and day trading and doing stupid things with. And uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I see a lot of similarities. So let's talk about the AI bubble. Most people will think NVIDIA. To me, NVIDIA is the picks and shovels, but there's also all of these other companies uh, just throwing AI on their name and they're changing their pitch and all of that. So when I talk about AI bubble, what are you seeing as an investor? Yeah, I think your point of the picks and shovels is is really well put. This goes all the way back to the gold miners. Uh, back in the gold mining days, you could invest in things as well. And it wasn't very profitable to go out and pick an individual gold miner to put your money on. But it was really good to to pick the person selling the, the picks and shovels to all the gold miners because you knew they were going to win along the way. And that's the, market's, um, that's the market's approach right now with buying NVIDIA. NVIDIA is buying or is powering the back end GPU uh, chip oriented things that powering these large language models. And that's why they've gone parabolic to say, uh, to say the least last week, or was it two weeks ago now, two weeks ago, that was throughout my investing career, the most focus I've ever seen on one individual company reporting. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they blew it out, right? They really every, every they held up. Every, every single metric. It was it was across the board. They crushed it. Stock went up 14% overnight. For context, the increase in market cap was the same as Target. The entire value of Target was the increase in market cap. Volkswagen, you name it. That is the increase in value overnight in NVIDIA. It's the fastest company to go from $1 trillion in market cap to $2 trillion in market cap. And so, listen, at the end of the day, if you rewind back to the 1990s, And this is a perfect corollary for NVIDIA. And I'm not portending what's to come in the future for NVIDIA. But the picks and shovels for the dot-com era was broadband. And Mm -hmm. we needed broadband throughout the nation. And so you had these companies then uh, progressing and building out this broadband capability for, you know, Yahoo.com and Pets.com, which is ridiculous. All of those things to utilize. And five years later, they were literally burying Burying because it was unused, not nothing to do with it. They were burying broadband in landfills. And so it's not to say even the picks and shovels can't be overproduced. One of the things that I think is scary uh, in the market right now is the fact that, hey, there is this, or at least there was this supply constraint on things like NVIDIA. And so do we just go out and buy as many of these chips as we can, get mm-hmm. ours now, and then what yeah. happens if those aren't actually all needed? And so yeah. we'll D- see how double and triple out. ordering, you know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. So again, I, as we said in the opening, I was playing with Cisco systems a lot and, and running it up. So I, I may be extremely biased in my kind of look back, but I see a lot of correlation to Cisco and NVIDIA because again, to me, Cisco was at least for a time, the backbone of the internet. Right, right. Switches, routers, all of that. And for a long time, um, you know, they were the only answer like NVIDIA is today. But having been through the entire cycle of Cisco, I mean, I think it is still true today. Cisco stock peaked, I think, in 2000 or 2001. 
and hasn't been back right. since. So I do know dead. that that's a fact. That is a fact, yeah. what you've just stated there. Yeah, it's dead money. That said, Cisco's revenue is probably doubled, maybe even tripled since then. I'm sure. So again, I'm sure. Right. So again, this is all valuations mm -hmm. and all of that. So what, what does this mean for NVIDIA, in my opinion? Again, I think NVIDIA is going to have a nice run. They've already had a nice run. I think it goes a little further. But you are already seeing competitors at the edit, edges, like AMD is the best example. Yep. Cisco got competition, right? It was Broadcom uh, and then Juniper and, you know, all these other network makers. You know, like your fat margins are my opportunity. Yep. Um, so there will be competition. If, if not already, it's coming. But it, it'll take time. Yeah. Right now, and, they're the only answer. And I think when you look at the Magnificent Seven, you're getting a divergence right now. Mm -hmm. So three out of the Magnificent Seven right now are down year to date. Tesla's gotten smoked. I think they're down 20 year to date. Apple's down like 6% year to date. And then Google is down as well. Now, Google being the outlier here, because Google is very involved in this AI play, I think they've just screwed up a, a lot of different turns. But execution has been horrible. <laughs> right, correct. Correct. But if you look at the other four being, and I may need help on this, Meta, you're looking at NVIDIA, you're looking at uh, Microsoft, Amazon. and you're looking Amazon. at Amazon. All of them very, very, very integral in this AI play and all talking about and touting all the future success that's going to come along with it. And there's your divergence. Mm -hmm. Apple really hasn't come up with a big AI play at this point. And Tesla is, you know, Tesla's kind of got their own thing going on. And then NVIDIA has screwed up their own AI, but the other four are showing lots of progress with AI. The reality is with AI at this point is it's all future earnings expectations. It is well, not current profitability. Yeah. The thing that they, if we're going to call AI a bubble, which, you know, I'll, I'll let the audience decide if AI is a bubble. This is the next thing. Because again, this is very much the dot com era to me. And, we need to, we, AI needs to go from a pet rock to solving real problems. And I think we're right on the cusp. Um, I read an article, uh, JP Morgan, I have it on my, my daily financial news. JP Morgan has helped corporate clients slash manual work 90% with cash flow management tools powered by AI. There was a support, there was a software company, I believe, that unlocks customer support with AI. We are starting to get to like some real stuff. Yep. And that is going to be fun to watch over the next, you know, four to eight quarters. When you look at these big revolutionary or evolutionary type products like the internet or whatever it may be, they all have this tendency to follow the same pattern. The excitement gets euphoric on the front end. Mm -hmm. It underwhelms for a period of time because it just takes time to make these things profitable and yep. the market corrects. And then they actually are underappreciated in the long term. And I think mm -hmm. that if you look back to the internet, I think that's a, like the best analogy you could ever have. These dot com things got euphoric oh, and you dude, were involved. That, oh, I don't know what euphoric squared or euphoric cubed is, but that was, it was, <laughs> food. it was wild living in the valley. I can't give a context like you can. You were there. It was wild. So, so, but that's the, that's the progression with these big evolutionary type things is they get euphoric, the market gets ahead of itself, a pinprick happens, it comes back down on the other side, and then it starts to meddle around, people got their hands burnt, so they're scared, and they don't want to dive back into that space, and then what happens is the profits start to move ahead, and people actually underappreciate the long-term success that they have the ability to create, and that yeah. very well could be the cycle that we're in right now, and if that is the cycle that we're in, things have to come back down to some normalcy, and there could be the argument that that is a bubble that that's uh, – you know, that, that, that you're referencing there. And, and again, up, then down, then sideways. And then the market doesn't realize the inflection point that can be created there. You've done a lot of research on the dot-com era. I, this is what it feels like to me, but you may have better context. If I were to take the, the cumulative amount of money raised um, for quote unquote dot-com companies, and yep. then fast forward five years, kind of feels like 80 to 85% of those companies went to zero. Maybe five to seven percent got bought for acquisitions. And then, you know, we had some great companies come out of it. But yep. the point is most of that stuff went to freaking zero. Yep. Yep. I think the big outstanding 
threat to the market right now is the fact that there are new up and coming companies that aren't even publicly traded. They're privately funded via venture capital, et cetera, behind the scenes right now that could absolutely come on and disrupt a Google. Maybe everyone doesn't just go to search like they have historically. And maybe that's what some of the market's pricing in with Google right now. But all of these up and coming new softwares, the moats around these businesses, yeah, maybe an Amazon with a delivery. Uh, there's a huge moat there. I totally get that. But the moats really aren't that significant with fast moving technology like this in a lot of these spaces. And that's being totally underappreciated by the market right now with just the performance of, again, these Magnificent Seven over the past you know year or so. Well, the other thing that I'm starting to see in the Valley, and again, you know, being here in the Valley is a lot of fun. There's more and more companies talking about taking on... It, it, using AI to kind of build their companies. And they're talking about having, you know, one to eight engineers. It's no longer, I've got to go compete with Google, Facebook, and Amazon and Microsoft to buy the best talent and pay 400 grand. It's like, no, I'm going to go get three of my buddies from college. We're all going to chip in a hundred grand. Let's, let's, let's get a two-year runway and try to build something. There's going to be a lot of companies. I actually heard on the All In podcast, and I agree with this, I think there's going to be a unicorn company, meaning a billion dollar valuation created in the next two to three years that has less than five employees. Think about that. Woo. Woo. You talk about profit. I, I can't imagine what, what that stock would do. You, can you imagine? I mean, we're looking at profit margins right now in places like Microsoft and saying, man, these are blowout profit margins. How many people does Microsoft employ? Yeah. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I, I will say this. Coming from, from uh, the wealth management aspect of things, the number of folks that are uh, extremely wealthy in like the coding backend technology type space is incredible. And they are very skilled. And I don't, I don't speak the language, so I don't know. I'm sure they all do different things that AI can't do, but um, uh, maybe some of the lower tier people can be replicated by AI that are making oh, yeah. no, I, a year or something. I spoke with a, I don't know, a 10 X engineer, one of my buddies in my network. And he's like, Michael, you don't get it. It's here. AI can do basic coding today. You just, you're more like a prompt engineer. Now, again, you have to go in and you have to do, you know, different things for security and scalability and things and in, in, in tweak. But he's like, no, I could create, he, he told me the other day, um, if he was going to take kind of a point solution, like any point solution, he's like, Michael, if you gave me two weeks of dedicated effort, I could, I could recreate 90% of it with AI. I'm like, <laughs> oh God, what is going to go on with engineers and computer scientists in the long run? Right? Yeah. And I've used a lot of the services on, on my end, like, Hey, I'm thinking, Hey, I do videos every single day. I'm like, Hey, you know, can, can I just plug in the topics and maybe this thought creation can be created on my behalf? Um, it's interesting. It, I, what I've found is about 50, 50, the accuracy on it. And maybe this is just the financial world versus yeah. other worlds, but 50, 50 is the accuracy. So I'm like, listen, I, if I have to go back and spot check all these, yeah, it's easier just to me go derive the information myself yeah. from the raw source rather than trusting this or, or having to go back and spot check it. So it's mm -hmm. definitely got use cases, but it's definitely got its deficiencies as well. No, no. I mean, uh I think one of the things that, that'll be very tough for AI to kind of go after is, is what, like what you do on Instagram, right. With your, you know, 60 second talks, you're always going to have a human doing that because we can pull our experience and all these other data sources together to give an opinion. I think AI is going to do great things for, you know, repeatable tasks, which when you break down coding, it's repeatable for a lot of it. Uh, yep. When you break down customer service, it's repeatable. When you break down, according to J.P. Morgan, cash flow management, it's clearly repeatable. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to watch. Uh, I think AI is without question here. I think AI is real, like the metaverse, never real. AI, real. What do you think? I I, I totally agree. When the metaverse came, so also like Apple just kind of tried to recreate what the metaverse did mm -hmm. when they brought these goggles to market, and I looked at this and I'm like, guys. Their, their revenues are negative year over year um, prior to these goggles. I'm like, their next evolutionary thing is going to be goggles that are $3,500. I'm like, who's wearing these things? And people are like, Taylor, you never thought everyone would use the iPhone either. I'm like, 
Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm so maybe. far yeah. off base, but like something that goes in my pocket, I, I don't know. I could, I could get, get around my head around that. Also, something that goes in my pocket also came out of at two hundred and fifty or five hundred dollars when it initially came out, not thirty five hundred dollars. That's that's a price tag that's most people's take home monthly paycheck, more than it. So what you're telling me is you only have two of those goggles at home. That's what you're telling me. I love the videos of someone driving a Tesla with them on. It's, it's like this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, wow. scary, scary is all hell, but amazing. <laughs> Glad he's not in my city. Exactly, exactly. Well, do me a favor, Taylor. Where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments is our handle. We're on both Instagram and on TikTok at Life Goal Investments. Thank you, buddy.